Ladies and gentlemen, this is your reaction. This is why didn't the USA ever adopt the metric system? Short and documentary, but also history matters. The USA is formerly one of the few countries on earth that doesn't use famously. Sorry, USA is famously one of the countries that doesn't use metric system. So why doesn't it? Okay. Uh, I think because uh, you know it was a British colony and then it became independent one, so it just continued to use imperial system, right? And then I guess. Uh, if I were to guess, they never stopped using it because, you know, it's just part of, you know, why would you stop it? Obviously, it's like a half and half now, kind of, right? Uh, you would think that it's all imperial system, but it's not, right? I mean, if you, if you drink something like a Pepsi or Coca-Cola or something, it's going to be in metric system. Lots of things are in metric system now there, right? But your base things generally, right? Uh, foot, uh, mile, basically, it's still an imperial system. So, yeah, I think it's out of necessity, right? Because uh, when Coca-Cola and companies like that wanted to sell globally, so they just created metric system things, right? Uh, because it's easier. Uh, it's not like they couldn't have created an imperial system, things like that. They could have created something like a gallon of Coke or something. But I think they kept the continuity, like they sell the same thing everywhere. And that's how a lot of company follows. More than that, scientists use metric system and not imperial system because it's more accurate. You can argue how imperial system works in some places better than metric, but overall metric just works better, right? Because if I remember correctly, metric system like one meter is like distance from a pole to uh, equator is like uh, 10 millionth of a distance of that or something like that, if I remember correctly, but that's one meter, right? Uh, at the same time, a foot is like basically length of your average man's foot, right? Which uh, changed over time, right? Humans get bigger and bigger. So uh, now it's like 12 inches, but before it was like less than that. So, you know, in that way, it's just fluctuating while Earth's distance is like what it is, what it is, right? So in that way, it's somewhat accurate. And from there, it just goes on, right? Like uh, a kil kilogram is like, uh, you know, one liter of water is kilogram. That's how it was used. And how do you see one liter of water? Like, how do you come up with liter? I think if I remember, it's like a 10, you know, I think it's 10, right? 10 cubic centimeter. I'm pretty sure it's that, right? So 10 cubic centimeter of water is one liter. So basically, they use all this. and It's really accurate compared to the imperial system. But yeah. Uh, I think slowly it's going to change because science uses a metric system. And when science uses something, science is global, right? I mean, you can have all the wars everywhere and just conflicts in here and there, but science will usually always be carried over globally, right? Science leads things, so eventually everything will turn to metric system because they're using it. So yeah, but let's see it. Let's see what real history is there, I guess. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. So I know which type of videos to react to more. Check out the reaction. There's a link in the season, and yeah be aware the United States is one of the few countries in the world that doesn't use the metric system. Instead, it uses US customary measurements, which is similar to the imperial system what? used in Britain. Sort of. But given... Okay, it's different. I thought it was imperial system to begin with. It's kind of like imperial system. ...that the overwhelming majority of nations have adopted the metric system, this raises the question, why didn't the United States ever do the same? So, as of American independence, the new nation unsurprisingly used the same system of measurements as the British. And since that even after the war, Britain was still the United States' main trading partner, it made sense to keep the system to help facilitate trade. George Washington and Thomas Jefferson had looked into adopting a new system in 1776, but... <laughs> I bet there's 10 carats equal one double scruple. 10 double scruples equal one ounce. Oh, this is real. 10 one ounces equal one pound. 10 pound is, is one stone. Oh, yeah. People also talk about how much stone. I've heard a lot of British people saying that, like, I weigh these stones. Like, what the fuck? Uh, first time I was confused, like, what are you talking about, stones? But I guess it's a measurement. Uh, 10 stones equal 1 quintal. 10 quintals equals 1 hogshead. I don't know, man. But given that they were, you know, busy, it wasn't a priority. President James Madison was a fan of the metric system, but when its use was abolished across Europe in 1812, he and many others because believed the system would die out. In the early 19th century, the British sought to standardise the measurement system its empire used. And so it created the imperial system, which had some differences to the units that America. One tank was uh, 2,000 pounds, one pint equals 16 floor rounds, one gallon equals 100, okay. That is US one, that is imperial one. Ha! Huh. 
Americans used. Britain had hoped that the United States would adopt the imperial system as well, but the Americans didn't fight and win a war against the British just so they could keep taking orders from them, so no. As the United States continued to grow as a chunk of international trade, many of its businesses started to trade with more and more nations. These countries used the metric system which meant that US businesses were using both. As such, to facilitate this and to lessen trade reliance on Britain, President Andrew Johnson passed the Metric Act, which formalised conversion rates and allowed businesses to use both. So did this formal recognition of the metric system change anything? Well, not really. As the 20th century approached, American feelings towards the metric system hadn't changed. However, academic and scientific communities pressured successive presidents to adopt the system, but they were denied for three primary reasons. The no, first was that doing so would require effort, and nobody wanted that. The second was that the late 19th and early 20th centuries were a fairly isolationist and patriotic period and many Americans didn't want to adopt the foreign metric system when they were already using the American system. The argument was that other societies were worse than America and they used the metric system, and thus by adopting it in the United States it would only serve to diminish the country. The third reason was that what many- What the fuck? We are better than everybody else. We are smarter, geniuses, just wealthier. We are so geniuses that we are not going to use their units. Like. What does unit of measurement has to do with you being better? How is that genius? I don't know. It's, I don't know why they're funny to me, but it just is. I think it's just like, you know, once they implemented it, like imperial system, there's no reason to change it to metric. I guess that's the, that's the only thing I can think of, right? Policymakers and manufacturing leaders in the United States believed that it was an inevitability that not only would America rise to the top of the great powers, but would eventually eclipse them all. And so why go to the cost and effort of replacing US customary measurements when the rest of the world would inevitably change for America? This line of thinking continued until the 1970s. This was when President Gerald R. Ford went the extra 1,609 meters in order to swap the United States over to the metric system. For 1,669 meter, <laughs> so basically a mile. <laughs> First, he passed a law which placed the metric system as America's preferred system. He and Congress also established sorry, the metric. Sorry, 1609. I said 1,600 or 1609. Sorry. So basically a mile. Metric Conversion Board, whose purpose was to guide industry in the country into a permanent adoption of the metric system. The problem was that the board couldn't agree on how to adopt the system, and also nobody listened to it. And when Ronald Reagan took office in 1981, he ended the board, seeing its work as un-American. And thereafter, the attempts to change to the metric system have been unenthusiastic and unsuccessful, meaning that the United States would stay as one of the few countries in the world that didn't use the metric system. <laughs> okay, first of all, that Amer an American thing, right? Ronald Reagan, I don't know. There are people who are fan of Ronald Reagan, they are mostly, mostly Republicans, there are people who are not, they are left side, mostly Democrat. But, you know, I'm, you know, I, I don't think left, right, or anyway. I just think common sense, but it just makes me feel like if scientists say the metric is better, most countries use the metric is better. So just saying that using anything but imperial system or whatever they have in US imperial system, what was that called? US something? Because all those thought it's an imperial system, but apparently it's different. So how is this saying that using metric system is un-American? How does that make sense? Like, how is using a unit of measurement make something un-American? Like, isn't adopting something better is good? Right? I don't know. It's not like US came with the system that they use. They adopted from British to begin with. Because they were British, right? Before the independence. I hope you enjoyed this episode and a special thanks to my countries in the world that didn't use <laughs> Freedom units. Four freedom equals one constitution. 12.5 fourth of July's equal one fighter jet. 1776 second amendment equals one atom bomb at least that tracks nine football equal one moon landing okay 22 ball leaguers equals one big truck I just two banjos equals one big food this is a perfect this is perfect thing right here <laughs> all right all right well there you go why didn't the u.s ever adopt metrics is no i think it will eventually have to because like i said milliliter thing already works right nobody gets a gallon of coke or pepsi whatever so that already is there. Lots of other things are already been used there, right? Uh, but the main thing, right? Pounds, miles are still basically that. But scientists are still using metric system, right? Uh, everything is, you know, even the, you know, uh, scientists use, first of all, scientists use Kelvins, right? But Kelvin units are based on the Celsius units, right? 
So in that way, you know, Celsius is like kind of, you can say it like a scientific, you know, scientific thing. And in science, lots of time you do see Celsius, but main thing is always Kelvins. But the point is scientists use metric, right? Uh, most countries use metric. So there's no reason to change from miles to kilometer right now. But one day when things goes even more global than it is today, right? When uh, global trading, global travel will become like way too easier, right? When borders become like a, just like a suggestion type of thing. Oh, I want to go from here to here. Technology comes better and better. Travel becomes better and better. Somehow borders will become less pain in the ass, right? Like how people in EU basically just go through border war. One day that will happen because of technology, right? And one day the GPS will not be, uh, you know, bound to nations, right? It will be more of a global thing. It doesn't matter which GPS system you use. It will be global. And at that point, if most, most countries are kilometer, it will feel weird to use miles, wherever their miles is. So eventually miles will go away too, right? And eventually people too, when they start to rely on this GPS type of system more and more, before you know it, miles would completely go away, where everybody just think of kilometers and meters at that point. So yeah, there you go people. If you like my channel, subscribe and I'll see you next time.